Hey guys, Dr. John Whittle here. Uh, just had something wanted to do a video about that's come up in the last two weeks I've had many people seemingly uh, needing help with. Um, there's all kinds of things, as you know, in our practice about self-help and how people can keep themselves um, from getting injured in the first place, but then also when you are injured, what you can do yourself. And if you've been in our practice, many times you've seen us use this. Uh, this is called a Viber Percussor. It's a probably $1,000 piece of equipment. Uh, you can't actually get these retail. Uh, they're very expensive, they work great, uh, but it's more of an industrial grade uh, product. A couple of years ago, I found this product, which Wall makes, which is about $40. Exponentially cheaper. Does it work quite as well? No, it doesn't work as well, but again, for such a cheap price, this is something that anybody can get themselves, and you can use it home for all sorts of things. The problem is, if you don't use it properly, you're not gonna get near as much results, and that's kind of what we found. So a big difference between a percussor and something that does the vibration and a massager is instead of rubbing, it actually is tapping. And that tapping makes a frequency that actually helps to penetrate. It works very, very well, so it does like a deep massage, but actually with a lot less effort. So the two mistakes people do is they put it on too high thinking that it's gonna be a massager. And you really don't wanna do that. You actually want it at a fairly medium to low um, speed. And it's also not about how deep you press. You actually put a fairly gentle pressure on the area that you're trying to treat. The other thing about it that a lot of people seem to be mistaking or forgetting to do is you also want to use motion while you're doing that. So I'm going to turn this off just in case that that sound is a little bit off. But when you're doing it, you want it on that low point. And let's say we're just working with a forearm problem, a tennis elbow, something like that. You usually don't want to be right where the big problem is. You want to be right nearby it. You don't want to be right on, let's say, if you've got a nerve impingement stuff, but right nearby. And as this would be tapping just slightly, you want to move your muscle through that range of motion. So you actually want to make sure you want to shorten the muscle and then you want to elongate it while you're doing that and you will get much, much better results when you do that. It's okay to do just static. I mean, you can kind of go with the flow. Most people do figure what works and what doesn't for them. But a lot of people, it seems, are forgetting to move while you're doing that. And that would work the same for a hip, something like that. If you're on someone's hip, I'm going to be a little high because so you show in the video, but let's say you're doing a sciatic piriformis, you would want to actually be bringing your leg up, you would want to be kicking your leg back, you want to be rotating, you want to be moving that muscle through that range of motion, and you're going to get a lot better results. So I hope that helps, and I hope that helps you get better help.